our last fantastic speaker here, Sunny Bates. I'm so excited for her to be speaking because as you've all probably gathered by now, she is the mother of my very best friend Lola and Lucy. And um, I'm very excited to hear what she has to say about all the things that I've heard from the very personal side, but in a more kind of bird's eye view. So, welcome. I don't know about all of you guys, but I have a major tag. <laughs> right? It's like there's so much great stuff. And everything I wanted to say, I'm just a little loud. So, um, do I, where am I turning it down? Oh, there. Okay. Um, everything that, that, uh, that I want to say has already been said. And I was going to talk about network structure, and I was going to talk about the whole life work family balance, and, and about careers. And you know what? I, I guess I'm just going to tell a story. Well, you know, we've all told stories. But, but things are really, really different now. I mean, you guys can look up in a second and find out about anybody in the room. You can look up on my website, and you can say, OK, this is Sunny Bates. And, what is she's this kind of connector, right? What is this? This is this connector, and there's this invisible network, and what is it? And you know, it sounds pretty cool, and maybe I could do that too. So how do I get from there to here? Okay, 30 years ago, I was in a room kind of like this. It wasn't as nice as this, but um, I was graduating from Cornell. The economy totally sucked. We had um, I had a degree in Middle Eastern studies and energy and economics. And I knew I wasn't going to work for an oil company in Saudi Arabia. So we had the, uh, <laughs> I already said no to that. Um, we had a, um, our president at the graduating address said, you know, it's really rough out there right now. So write to me if you get work. I'm thinking, ouch. So it was no to Saudi. It was yes to New York City. And um, I just moved to New York figuring fame and fortune. Maybe I'd get into publishing. I'd figure it out. Well, I was from the Midwest, I didn't have a lot of friends there, but I got to New York and I thought, well, you know, what do you do? You just get started, right? And I didn't really know what I was passionate about. I mean, I was obsessed with passion, but I didn't really know what I, but I, like, I was like, what can I be passionate about? Chasing, but no, I just, figured, I just figured that, you know, I would start. So I got the yellow pages, and back then, it means a, a massive book. It looks like those giant dictionaries like the medical dictionaries that you see in the library, millions of names. And I went in the section that said periodicals and magazines, and there were 220 that I chose that I thought, well, I could work here. And I'm thinking, you know, the you know, between me and a job are 220 phone calls. So I sat down at the desk, <laughs> literally, I sat down at the desk, and you had to sit down because you couldn't walk with the phone. Right? It was wired, it was sent to the wire. And I think this one even had a rotary dial. I know, it's my two methods, so I'm like dialing the dollars. So, so 220 cold calls, 100 personal in-person interviews, um, over eight weeks, I got three job offers. I'm like, okay, this is great. It's a numbers game, right? I can do this. I can figure this out. So I say, okay, this is really great. Let's figure out which one. I get these three job offers and three different magazines. So the first one I go to, I think, okay, this is going to be really great. And I met with the publisher, and he said, you know, once you come back, we'll figure out the deal. Why don't you come to my apartment? I thought, Oh, great, okay. So I'm really excited. He's going to think I'm really good. I'm going to be like, terrific at this job. But I knock on the door, and he opens it up, and he's wearing a short little bathrobe with nothing on underneath and just way too much going on, right? <laughs> <laughs> I walk through the door like this, and I think, oh, my God, what do I have to do? Do I, like, I so didn't sign up for this. What do I have to do? And I remember thinking, I don't have to do anything. I can just walk out this door because I've got two other offers, right? So I was like, okay, this is not for me, and I leave. <laughs> so the next one is this big prestigious magazine, and believe me, that still happens. It's really the <laughs> so, um, so I go to Newsweek, and they sit me down and they say, okay, we've got this great fast track job for you. I'm thinking, ooh, fast track, I like the sound of that. And then I hear them <laughs> saying in the same sentence, five years. I'm thinking, wait, five years, fast track, same sentence? I don't think so. I thought I was going to start there, and you're saying five years. So that one's out the door. So I leave for that one, and then I think, okay, this last one is the one I really wanted anyhow, right? You know, we always convince ourselves of that, and we're pretty happy. I'm an optimist, right? So, so um, I go to this. It's a, it's, a, it's a magazine that wasn't exactly new, but it still felt like a startup because it had no money, and, and everyone there was working for love, and everyone was pretty passionate about it, and I was kind of you know, excited about it. So 
I get in and I, and I love the people and I love the whole scene and it was really wonderful and then three months later they close the doors. And I'm out of a job and I think, oh man, I gotta start all over again, right? Actually, no, not right. Because in the last six months, I have met 100 people. And I have gone back around to those people right after I'd gotten my job and I told them all that I got this job, right? So I either wrote a letter because that's what you have to do that or I made a phone call because that's what you have to do that. <laughs> and, I, and I said, now I've got this cool new job. And they're like, okay, great. So I had already taken care of that network piece. So I remember there were like 30 or 40 people that I really liked. And I thought, okay, I'm going to call them up. And you know what? They all saw me. And there was, I didn't realize that, well, first of all, everybody wants to help. I mean, that's the big piece about networking about a network. You've heard the word generosity. But you know, if you go in and you're clear about what you want, and I was real clear the first time, and when I came back, I was even more clear the second time about what I wanted. But the second time, I came back not just like an eager beaver ready for a job, but I came back with like real currency. I had this great story. I had this great tragedy of a, of a failed magazine and failed dreams, and everybody wants a good story. And part of the whole network runs on this information is currency and great stories people want to hear. So, Going and telling my story, telling this story, and, and people were, you know, love the juicy gossip and love to hear about the villains and the victims, and, and I got an, another, another job. So there I am, I've got job after job, and great ones, interesting ones. I mean, I had my dream job with a bitch boss, and it was terrible, and I had to leave. And then I had that job I couldn't imagine taking, and like I couldn't see myself in it with a great boss. And I tell you, take a great boss, work with great people anytime over to the it doesn't matter what it is, you'll learn a lot more. So 10 years and seven startups and a baby later. And thinking, um, it, at that point I was one of three publishers in New York and I had negotiated a gig where I had the baby at the office in a playpen. And believe me, there was nobody else with a baby, much less with a baby in the office. I remember thinking, you know, the industry is changing but not fast enough. If you're talking, and this is 23 years ago, 22 years ago. Um, it's not changing fast enough for it to make a difference for me and my family. So, with some great pain, I, I figured, okay, I'm going to do something else. I'm just going to go home and start a business. Well, what was I going to, what did I have then? I had, I had a great reputation. I had a pretty great network, right? And this is, I had built this up over 10 years. Um, I had real integrity and people knew that I would do what I said I would do. And I really understood talent. So I thought, I'll become a recruiter. It's good at putting people together. So, so I did. I went home and I started a business, and, and it was pretty great. I mean, I had, I had a few really good years, and then I got on sort of identifying this whole digital revolution that was happening. And, um, and I really jumped in. I began to put people together in New York, what was called Silicon Alley. It was the sort of pale version of Silicon Valley. But it was ours, and, and it was rocking. Um, and about half the time, I felt like we had this amazing business. I thought, you know what? This is incredible. I've got this really interesting business. I've got a great team. I have great clients. I have these two great kids. I've got some flexibility with my time. And the other half of the time I thought, you know, I am a total fraud. I cannot believe I'm trying to pull this off. I remember one time in particular, it was um, I was in a shootout. I was, I was pitching my heart out for a job. I was on the phone with the president of Sony USA. I was in my pajamas. I have two kids that are about ready to melt down. I'm telling him that we are the only people to do this job who will do it better than those other three multinational firms that they are, um, that we're pitching up against. And I'm watching this sort of meltdown happen with kids. I've got a banana in each hand, right? And I'm shoving them in the mouths of my children. <laughs> Please don't melt down. Like, do I have to gag you? And I'm like, yes, believe me, we're the ones that this. I'm watching this whole scene. So um, I'm hanging up before they do have the meltdown, although there are other times when they do melt down. But, um, and I remember just thinking, oh, who do I think I am getting? Like, really? Do I really think that I could pull this off? I remember thinking, you're overreaching again. And then thinking, no. You know what? <coughs> the only way we grow, the only thing we've got to reach beyond our grasp, like people are talking about all day long today. I mean, Chris is right there. You've got you to reach beyond your grasp because that's how we grow. So you just got to work through it. There's nothing else you can do. So. Again, I'm saying it was a really interesting and fun time. And, um, and it heated up, and the internet revolution was happening, and, and it was like selling blue jeans and the gold brush, and it was really amazing. We had 1.17 people. We had an office in LA and in London and in New York. Um, and then it all crashed. 
In 2000, the internet bubble totally crashed. 80% of our clients went out of business. It was really brutal. There was no work. I mean, there was no work for us. And um, so we were like, OK, what do we have? We have this great network. We, we know how to help people reimagine themselves. And we've done it over and over again. So there was, um, we started a coaching business to help people reposition and reframe themselves. Um, I wrote a book called How to Earn What You're Worth. It's interesting. It's still a big seller in China, which is crazy to me, about how you <laughs> position your, your, yourself into the workforce. Um, and we kind of muddled through, and you know, but, but my heart wasn't in it anymore. And I was really accustomed at that point to working, you know, really um, from a place of love. So I said, okay, it's time to go out, and, and um, I, I gotta get over this. And I sold the business to my employees. And I remember thinking, what am I gonna do now, right? Like, what do I have? I'm asking that same question. What do I have? What do I want? What's my passion? Um, and then I'm in that same place again. It's like, okay, I'm just gonna get started. But what I have at that point is an insane rockin' network, right? I've got 40,000 people that I've met over the last 30 years, or 25 years, and, um, and they, these people know me and respect me, and they're my life, right? So I've got this incredible network, and I think, you know what? I think what I do is I just put people together. There's gotta be something in that. You know, I can't help it. It is, I used to say it was my pathology. It was like I would have dreams and wake up and think, Oh, that was a good dream. Those two should know each other. <laughs> and that's when I realized, okay, you know what? I mean, I totally get it now. That's my gift, and I guess that's my passion. It didn't look like I, what I thought it was going to look like, but that's what it was. So I said, well, just, that's what I'm going to do. That's going to be my living. I'm going to find a way to make a living out of it. This is no problem. So why is this at all of interest to you guys where you are? Well, there's a few things on it, but I think the biggest part I keep talking about, and what you've heard all day long, from all these amazing sessions, this is business of networking. Like, what does it mean and why is it important? Um, lastly, Chris Takis did one piece, so I don't have to worry about that. But the network is probably the most important creation that you can work on right now. And you've already got one, you may not think about it yet, but everybody around you, this is all part of your network, and, and everyone from high school, and all of their friends, and their, and their and your friends' parents, and, and the, your friends' parents, but that's your network right now. So start thinking about it, and don't make divisions about where things are going to come from, because you don't know. So begin to look at, there's this caring and this feeding of networks that people talked about. So there's a few things about networks that are a little unusual you might not know, which is not about debt and obligation, you owe me here, you owe me that. No. It's all about generosity. It really is. You're coming from a spirit of generosity. So the three things about, about networks that are really interesting and important when you're understanding how to build it. It's generosity, it's trust, because you gotta be trusting. And you gotta trust people, and you gotta be trustworthy. And then the way that's fed is this acknowledgement. Just you gotta thank people all along the way for helping you out. You gotta bring them along in your journey. Because that's what's in it for us, right? So, so you're, you're, you're in a situation, okay, you're on your way in, and I'm, I'm gonna do a little role play with me. Hi. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. It's hard for me to say this. Hi, my name is Sonny. I'm graduating from Middlebury, don't I wish, um, in February. And, um, and I'm studying energy economics. And, and, um, and I know that you were a friend of a friend of my friend's parents. And you've got this, you work in this really interesting smart grid. And I've been having a little trouble trying to figure out where all the jobs are in this new green economy. Because they seem to be living in different places. And I think you've probably got some insight on that. And I would love to meet with you for 20 minutes because um, I know that you can help me on this. I'm really trying to figure it out. And I can fill you in on all the really incredible things that are going on. Now, Middlebury, you may not know that we're one of the greenest campuses in the country. We have an amazing sustainability program. And basically, I'm part of an entire generation where this is one of the most important issues. And I think that's important for you to know about. Now, you know what? Maybe not all 10 people you ask will say yes, but I swear not more than one or two will say no. And those are great odds, right? So be really clear. You've got two things in every encounter. You've got a give and a get. And you know you guys all have something to give. So remember that in that exchange. This is what I want and this is what I have to give. And then interaction by interaction, that's how you build your network. And what happens is you come and meet me and you know because I'm a connector, I'm gonna have five or six other people for you to meet, right? 
hey, I'm, I'm going to make sure, and maybe I'll introduce you to them. And then you'll go from there and you'll say, oh, I met them, they're fabulous. And they gave me three other people. All of a sudden, you've got this network that builds and builds and builds. And you're building this really strong, robust network. And believe me, your entire career, all of your many careers, and you will have, now they're saving seven careers, probably as many as 20 jobs over the course of your lifetime. So everything's going to come through your network. Really is. So what do you have here? You've got the big takeaway on this is, don't go obsessing and looking for a job you can be passionate about. Bring passion to every single thing you do. And you'll find it along the way. Uh, the network's most valuable creation you can make right now. And think about it in the broadest sense. I'm getting away from this thing. Um, think about it in the broadest sense possible. Because this is what's going to be the whole backbone infrastructure of what you're going to build your life. And the last piece is just get started. Right here, right now, just do it. Now, there's one more thing that I want to talk about here, because I, um, um, I've been going to TED since 1993. And um, I've never missed one. Um, and this is actually the first time I've talked a full 18 minutes or um, 16 minutes. Um, so it's a real pleasure. But I have to say that never have I been more proud that I have been of, t of you today, Cliff. Really, truly. You have done an unbelievable, get up here. You've done an unbelievable job. Oh,